Well, thank you so much, Alan, for having the interview with ProMedia Training. It's really an honor to have you on the line with us, with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, Alan Parsons is a legend in the music industry. A, I should say, many, many multi-time Grammy-nominated producer, engineer, musician, songwriter. You really have the gift in all areas, you know, not just one or the other. And so how many, <laughs> how many nominations has it been now? I think uh, I think I'm up to eleven, wow. um, which I think is the record uh, number of nominations in my category without ever winning one. <laughs> that's but, that uh, is pretty amazing. I mean, that's I know always it would be great to win, but having that many nominations is probably a, a record. <laughs> <for> <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think um, it's um, Steve Vai, one of the one of the guitar players. Um, you know, has a similar a similar uh, achievement in having <laughs> lots and lots of nominations without winning. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, one day, one day, I'm still hopeful. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I mean, music is timeless. So, I mean, that's your passion, and I don't see you, uh, you know, giving that up anytime soon. So, you know, your art just keeps growing. Well, I'm not getting any younger, but uh, I hope you're right. I hope, I hope <laughs> I've, I've got a few more years in me. Yes, I, yeah, yes, absolutely. I so. You know, you might as well do it forever. So, um, tell us more about your master class that's coming up, and about the educational uh, programs that you've developed and put together, um, so that we can let our students know about some options that they have, and you know, about like what the experience is like actually being in a class with you for 16 hours learning techniques from you? <laughs> um, we've done a, a whole uh, series of these uh, masterclasses. We call them masterclass training sessions. Um, essentially, they were conceived out of a uh, DVD series we put out a couple of years ago called The Art and Science of Sound Recording. And um, that's now also developed into a book um, by the same title, The Art and Science of Sound Recording. And um, the masterclass is a kind of uh, sort of an adjunct to, to, those, uh, to, the, to the DVD series and the book. Um, essentially what happens is we, we book um, a talent, usually a local talent. Um, and uh, on, on this occasion we've got uh, a local guy you probably know called Chris Price. Yes, and um, he, uh, he he'll be he'll be there. And what happens is um, the whoever signs up for the uh, for the sessions uh, gets to uh, participate in the in, in a in a genuine recording session uh, produced produced by me, and uh, they get to pitch in their ideas and ask questions. And we go we go right through the uh, the entire process of. Uh, of recording from uh, you know setting up the studio, choosing microphones, uh, getting a drum sound, getting a bass sound, um, getting the band playing together, recording a track, recording um, overdubbed uh, solos, uh, guitars, keyboards, and what have you, vocals, and then finally the uh, the, the mix. Mm -hmm. But it's um, what what's great about it is that uh, it is real. It, we we actually end up at the end of the day with a with a, a performance or, or, or a record that, that could very well be released. In fact, we've we've had had releases from previous sessions in uh, in the other from the other classes we've done. So basically, the student gets to actually participate in creating the mix of a of a final record. That's right. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> the, the, there it, it's the sort of ultimate artist's nightmare to have a whole bunch of producers in the room. I'm sure. Um, but uh, you know, uh, I I I, rem I have to remain the uh, the ultimate uh, mm -hmm. casting vote, I suppose. Right. But, well, uh, you're you're the final decision. I should say the the buck <laughs> st stops there. Right. Well, but that's and so. What level of you know how much skill at what level do you think a person would need to be at professionally to experience your class? Do you think you could? It would have to be a professional level engineer or somebody who's a mid level um, or a beginner, or does it not really matter? I think there's there's room for people who uh, who have lots of experience and people who have no experience. I mean, uh, for the for the person who's never set foot in a recording studio before, it'll be a, a real eye opener to mm -hmm. see uh, what what goes on, um, to see how uh, to see how you know decisions are made, how uh, you know tracks are laid down, how uh, effects are applied, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
and for the experienced engineer or the experienced producer or somebody who has a perhaps has a home studio wants to learn uh, how the pros uh, deal with things uh, it's good for them too mm -hmm. and um, to be honest we've had you know really top notch engineers from top studios come to these sessions so mm -hmm. the, there's there's no real uh, there's no real entry requirement uh, you know it's just just really having an interest is the most important thing now that brings up an interesting question because you you have so many different talents um, in your experience i would think that to be a great engineer that also being a great musician or having a great ear for music truly helps um, creating a, a final product that, you know, there are, we have students who come to us that they're saying, you know, they're musicians, but they want to be engineers or producers. And I would think that having the combination of skills has certainly helped you in your overall career and your, you know, the diversity that you bring uh, as a producer and engineer. Yeah, I, I kind of went full circle. I mean, I, I, I came into the music business as a, as a musician, um, was lucky enough to um, to have a, a, or to land a job at uh, Abbey Road Studios as a trainee engineer. So at that point, I pretty much dropped my uh, my music, uh, musical exploits and, in, in favor of learning the, the en recording engineering trade. That swiftly developed into record production, and then um, we, you know, as you may know, I made a, a bunch of uh, albums as an entity called the Alan Parsons Project, which of course um, I'm very yeah, familiar. Which uh, you know, it it, it became um, it became necessary um, actually uh, pretty much after we'd uh, completed the. Uh, or the the nine albums or ten albums I've forgotten which it is that we that we made uh, became necessary when when the Alan Parsons project was no more I, and I made a an album as Alan Parsons it, it it was just considered a good idea to form a band and go out and play play live so it was really only at that point that um, that I became a producer engineer and musician all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Was this a passion that you had from the time you were a child? Was was music always your calling, or was it something that you realized, you know, later as a teenager? Like, at what point did you realize realize that this is what I wanted with my life? Um, I certainly was born into a musical family. Both my parents were musicians, and um, I was, uh, you know, I had the benefit of being classically trained on on piano and flute. Um, but uh, really, I think the the crunch came when uh, when I started, you know, buying buying pop records at the age of about eleven or twelve, and um, taking up the guitar, at, you know, soon after that. Then 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 I became uh, you know very very much engrossed in uh, wanting to play in bands and and and, and to listen, um, you know, constantly listen to to rock and pop music. Mm -hmm. uh, pro probably to the detriment of my education. I was uh, <laughs> essentially, essentially a high school dropout in favor of going into music. Well, you definitely went for it. And um, so, I mean, obviously, you've had big hits with your own projects. Um, Eye in the Sky, uh, Don't Answer Me. I mean, actually, that was one of my favorite songs as well. I, I, I really do love some of those records. Um but what would you describe, you know, I know you had worked with a group, uh, Pink Floyd, which obviously they're an icon. What would you ex express your experience was like dealing with um, artists of that level and their expectations? You know, we have a lot of students who are asp aspiring engineers, and I always express to them, you know, how hard you really have to work and put in the time and the energy. And I'm sure there's days where, you know, you guys were up for all night long for months on end working on projects. Um, so, I mean, what was your experience like working with some of these mega artists with the, the workflow and the workload? And, um, you know, describe that experience. <laughs> well, it was, it was hard work, but um, it, was, it was, you know, such, uh, such good times. I mean, uh, I, I could never have asked for... Uh, a better grounding in, in sound recording than to, to have worked with the Beatles and with Pink Floyd. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it, it was just, um, you know, a, a fantastic voyage to uh, to work with these people. 
and to uh, get uh, you know the, the the amazing training that I got um, by some uh, some of the best engineers in the world at Abbey Road Studios. I mean, it's 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 the absolute bees knees of locations to learn how to how to make records. Um, I I cherish every moment. It's uh, you know I I, I loved uh, working with those with those guys and with all the other various people in from all walks of life from all styles of music. It was really just a a great music and ultimately probably pretty much every every experience was an influence on my own career later as an artist and 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 uh, on my productions and engineering work as well. And do you feel as though that you have a couple moments in your life that are, you know, truly highlights, like some, you know, certain moments that really were life changing, or do you feel it was just a an accumulation of everything? I, I think, um, you know, seeing uh, seeing Dark Side of the Moon, you know, rise up the charts the way it did, and uh, you know, knowing that I had had spent every moment uh, with the band recording that that uh, work. That was mm -hmm. a great feeling, and um, possibly another sort of landmark achievement in my in my particular case was that uh, I had a number one hit with uh, with a band called Pilot in in, uh, in the UK. You probably know their song "Magic." Oh yes. oh oh, it's magic. That's yes, it. and um, that was tipped off the number one spot in the UK by another production of mine um, with a band called St uh, Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. Wow. So, uh, you know that was that was a, another <laughs> another crowning moment, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And you've had so many of them. Well, I've I've <laughs> I'm still here, almost fifty years into my career, and and still loving it. You know, so I'm 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 glad of that. <laughs> well, that makes a statement because you know the music industry is is definitely uh, you know not for the faint of heart and. You have to have a lot of drive and passion and talent <laughs> to to really have longevity. Um, you know, for for the tech geeks out there who are you know always asking us and would love to ask you if there were a couple pieces of gear in the studio that you really could not live without, what what do you think it would be? <laughs> um, in, interestingly, um, it's probably the uh, the piece of gear we call the limiter. Um, Notably, a, a fairly ancient one developed in the 40s and 50s uh, by Fairchild. Um, having said that, I, I love to use it on vocals. I love to use it on bass guitar. Um, but unlike many engineers and producers, I don't like to compress or limit mixes. Um, so, so many, uh, so many people do, and I, I, I just find it uh, makes for very sort of t tiring and fatiguing listening. So I, I like to preserve dynamics on on the mixes I do, but um, to answer your question, yes, the Fair, Fairchild Limiter, I'd be very, uh, very, uh, very sad to, to to see that go if I if I wasn't able to use it. Okay, that would be the one you'd want to take with you on an island if you had a that's right. studio and one piece of <laughs> if equipment. I was going to make records on an island. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. So, do you have um, upcoming tours coming up? If if um fans wanted to know are you currently on tour right right before the master class we're uh, we're doing four shows in in the florida area um great okay. two two of them with um two of them with symphony orchestra i'm pleased to say um it's always a big thrill to uh, to play with uh, with a with an orchestra for sure that, that's a that's yeah. a real high to get to play yeah. with an orchestra <laughs> it's uh, it's also very technically demanding of course particularly for the uh front of house audio engineer because right his his uh, seven guys thrashing out uh, loud uh, loud sounds from their amplifiers and trying to compete with a you know an orchestra that is just uh, you know at room level you know it's right. technically demanding but we, we we make it happen and as a musician do you can you play by ear or are you more um i mean do you have perfect pitch or are you would you just consider yourself a, a well-trained musician I don't have perfect pitch. I, I have um, what some people call relative pitch. I mm -hmm. can often tell. Uh, I, I can often tell what key something is in. Um, but uh, it, I think I think having uh, having perfect pitch can actually sometimes be a hindrance. It can be a you know people who hear a, a, a tape playing at the wrong speed can be you know so that everything's flat or everything's sharp can 
can really jar on their ears. So I'm, I'm, I'm rather glad I don't have perfect pitch. That's true. But, I've, um, heard, I've heard it can be actually a little bit of, of a strain, of a stress to have yeah, it for yeah. those reasons. Great. Well, thank you so much. I mean, is there anything else that you would like to share with, um, with our readers and uh, listeners that you think would be of um, you know, relevance to the thousands of aspiring engineers that we have who, who <laughs> well, I, I, I hope um, I hope anybody listening will um, will take a look at uh, the uh, DVD and book that I mentioned earlier. I hope they'll come to one of the master classes at some point. And we'll put a link on our site for that as well. Great, thank you. And um, the, the the website for the uh, the book and DVD is artandscienceofsound.com. That's www.artandscienceofsound, all one word, dot com. And my, uh, my website, which will show all the, uh, all the activities that I'm doing, concerts and so on, is alanparsons.com. Great. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for participating with us. All right, Jenna, well, thank you. All and right. Look forward to, uh, look forward and to good luck with your seeing next, you in the near future. Yeah, music projects. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look forward to hearing your next great work of art, for sure. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you.